Okay, so in your sketchbook, you're going to take the page here, you're going to divide it in half this way. And then you're going to divide it in half this way. So that we have three sections, one tall and two kind of almost squares. Over here on the left, in our tall section, we're going to draw a human figure, okay? Uh, so I'm going to be working with some proportions from the packet we're going to be doing. Uh, so these are listed in the packet. You're going to have to draw these in the packet again, but I wanted to go over them in the sketchbook first uh, because it's a little bit, it's a, it's a lot to cover. So I want to make sure that we are uh, all set, okay? So uh, we're going to start here by marking up here and, I don't know, about here. This is where the top and the bottom of our figure are going to be. All right. So uh, when we try to draw things proportionally, one of the tools we use is what's called a basic unit. So the basic unit is a part of the whole that we can use to measure things. So when we're drawing figures, we usually use heads. Okay. So we'd count how many heads something is. We'd count how many heads the total figure is or how many heads high the hips of the figure are, uh, whatever. Uh, but that's kind of our standard basic unit for drawing figures. So we're going to draw a figure that is uh, about eight heads tall. Eight heads is kind of a lot of heads for a figure. It's usually six to eight, somewhere in there. It's kind of a small head. but. Uh, it makes it a little easier to count when we use eight. It's a good number for uh, structuring the rest of the body. So here's the top of the head. Here's the bottom of the feet. I want to draw a line halfway in between the two. Now, I could use a ruler for this if I wanted to, but it's a little cumbersome. Ooh, I'm way off. I'm tired today. So the other way you can check if you don't have a ruler Something you usually do have with you when you're drawing is a pencil. A pencil can be really useful for measuring. So if I lay the end of my eraser down on this line here and then pinch on this uh, lower line, I mark a distance on my pencil. And then I can check this distance here against this one up here and see if those two spaces are equal. And they're just about equal. Uh, so now we'll divide this in half again. So now we've got four sections, one, two, three, four. And we'll divide each of those in half again. And then we've got eight sections for our figure. Okay. And that's how we're going to figure out where all the other parts of the body go. Yeah. Did you want the top right box to be shorter? Yeah. Well, uh, they're about equal. You just can't see the whole sketchbook. So yeah. These two boxes on the right make them about equal. All right, so now uh, I'm going to start drawing in the body. I'm going to start by drawing kind of an oval shape here for the head. So the head is one head tall because it's the head. And it's also at the top of the figure because that's usually where your head is. Okay, so that's the easiest part. Next, we're going to figure out where the hips are. So the hips are going to be, the bottom of the hips is going to be halfway down the body. So I'm going to kind of simplify my shapes, like one of these mannequins today, uh, to kind of keep things simple. I'm going to change the mannequin structure a little bit because I don't like some of the positioning, uh, but that's kind of the idea here. So I want to draw in hips. So for my hips, I want to have like a kind of a bowl shape. So I want to for a shortened circle up here. Is that even the same? I feel like that's way off, significantly off. What am I doing? Hold on just a second, I did something bad. I'm too tired. One, two, three, four, okay. So yeah, a four shortened circle at the top and then kind of coming down like this. I feel like this head needs to be a little bigger. All right, so here's the bottom of my hips, and the top of my hips are almost a head higher than that. So they're going to be just below head number five level. 
Uh, so now I'm going to draw in the knees. The knees are going to go halfway between the hips here and the ground. Come. And here's the heels. Now I'm going to fill the body in. So the neck is going to be here. Neck is about half a head. And then we're going to have the rib cage. The rib cage is going to be a little wider than the hips at the top. And then it's going to kind of curve in and get a little narrower towards the waist. So here's our rib cage here. Here we have the stomach. So this is a pivot point. I'm going to draw all my pivot points as being kind of circles. So all my joints are going to be like little circles like the mannequins. Okay. The hips are actually going to connect up on this, or the, sorry, the legs, the upper legs are actually going to connect up on the side of the hips. So I'm going to draw a little circle there to show where the joint is. And then from here, I'm just going to come down with kind of a cylinder shape. As we are doing this, we want to pay attention to try not to make the figure too skinny or too thick. And then we'll extend these down to the ankles here. For the feet, we're just going to kind of pull kind of a triangular shape. Okay. Now, our elbows are going to be just below the bottom of the rib cage. Actually, let me draw the shoulders up here. Those up here. Move this elbow out a little bit just below the bottom of the rib cage and the wrists are just below the bottom of the hips so then we can connect those and we'll just give it like a simple sort of hand shape for now so hands are probably about half as long as the forearm here Something like that. So there's our basic human structure. Okay. If the arm comes up to the side, the elbow is going to travel in an arc so that it remains the same distance away, right? Wrist will do the same sort of thing. Not going to put that all the way up. Something like that. Okay. Same sort of idea, same sort of distance. All right, so there's our basic figure. So we've got one head, two heads, knee, whoops, three heads, four, bottom, of hip and wrist uh, five this is the navel Okay. All right, so go ahead and draw this for me, please. I'm going to come around. If you need help, let me know.
Okay, next. We're going to start working on faces. I need everybody who isn't me to be quiet. Quiet, please. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So next we're going to do a face. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do kind of a simple method to do faces to start. Um, we'll probably get into like some more complicated methods as we go on. But to start with today, let's just go ahead and draw an oval for our face. Good enough. All right. So again, we have a basic unit that we use when we draw the face, just like when we drew the figure. Instead of using the head as the basic unit, for the face we use the eyes. So I want to draw a line about halfway up to the face. Here, here, that was much better. And I want to draw one going down. All right. So a lot of times when you see people drawing, they'll draw these lines on the face, bisecting uh, through the eyes and going down the middle. And uh, those are really useful for uh, keeping the facial features sort of oriented the right way, lining them up properly, especially when we start making the head looking in different directions or looking up and down. Uh, for this right here, uh, we kind of have uh, some limited utility to it, but uh, later on it'll become more useful for us. All right, so uh, our face is going to be five eye widths, okay? And uh, I think this is like one of the trickier things. We want to divide this line into five, so we want to be about, eh, nope. Seems like I came up with a pretty good way of doing this previously, but I forgot what it was. About here, about here, about here, about here, okay? So we want five equal spaces. One, two, three, four, five. So in the second space and the fourth space, we're going to draw some eye shapes. Then we can draw in the irises. When we draw eyes, we generally want the irises or the colored part of the eye to be partially covered up or touching the eyelids, okay? When we draw them smaller than that, so you can see the whites of the eyes above or below the eyes, it makes the person look drunk or crazy, okay? There's a Japanese word for it. I think it's sunpaku eye. It means three whites. So if you have an eye like this, generally thought to be like an insane person and if you have an eye like this like Billie Eilish it's a person who's on drugs usually 
Not saying anything about Billie Eilish, just that she's got this kind of eye. Yeah? So we generally don't want to show whites above or below the eye unless we're going for a look of like someone who's, who's crazy, maybe insane with rage, or somebody who's maybe like super tired like me or on drugs not like me. All right. Next. Next we want to do the nose. So the bottom of the nose is going to be halfway between the eye level here and the chin. It's going to be about here. The width of the nose is going to be about one eye width. The nose is going to be kind of like right there. Now, when people draw noses, they can tend to have a hard time uh, figuring out what lines to draw. So we're going to kind of make this into a formula as much as we can. Uh, so for today, let's draw one C shape on the left hand side, one C shape on the right hand side. I'm going to race out the middle. I'm going to draw kind of a stretched out U shape. Oh man, my drawings are not as good this time as they have been earlier today. That's all right. All right. And now I don't want to have a hard line coming up here. I want this to be really soft. I might even just shade it on one side to show that because you don't really have a hard edge on the side of your nose. There's not really any hard edge there, just sort of subtle transitions. That curve is going to go up into an eyebrow. Eyebrow will extend from inside the eye to slightly outside the eye. Bottom of the mouth is going to be about halfway between the bottom of the nose and the chin. So I'll mark that. That's going to be the bottom of the mouth. I'll move up a little bit from there, and that's going to be kind of the expression line. That's where the mouth opens, right? I want that to be a little wider than the nose. Then I can draw the top of the lip. Again, I don't necessarily want to have a really hard contour line for the lip. I'm just going to kind of lightly draw where the top's going to go, and then I'll shade it. I'll put a little shading underneath as well. Whew. Now that I've done that, I can kind of come in and define the person's jawline. And that's going to decide a lot of how masculine or feminine they look. So if we're drawing a specific person, we probably want to really look at their jawline and try to emulate what we see there. If we're just drawing a, an imaginary person, we maybe just want to sort of think about how we want their jaw to look, whether we want it to be kind of soft, whether we want it to be angular, whether we want them to have a big jaw or a small jaw. And then the last thing we have to figure out is the ears. So the ears are going to start at eye level. They're going to go up a little bit, and they're going to go down to the base of the nose level. So they'll end about here. Yeah, I can add some hair on. Can we make it fluffy? Sure. <laughs> yeah. You can add hair, you can put no hair, I don't care. And then we're going to add the neck. So the neck, if you feel your own neck, you'll notice that it connects like right underneath your ears. All right, so we don't want to draw a neck that connects here. All right, we want it to connect right under the ears. However, if we make it too wide, it's going to look weird. So really the shape starts right underneath the ears and then sort of curves in and then back out towards the shoulders. So we want to curve in and then back out, something along those lines there. And now we can go in and we can clean up these sketching lines. So one of the things to really practice when you're doing your sketchbook stuff is practice drawing light and drawing hard. Okay, so we want to draw light when we're doing our sketching and then we want to draw, come in and draw kind of firmer, more confident lines 
when we get towards the end here. So practice that. Your sketching lines should be easy to erase. different method for the next one. We're going to start by drawing a circle. So for this one we're going to be drawing a head in profile. So meaning from the side. So we want to start with a circular shape. So we've got like two main parts to the skull. Okay, we've got the dome, which is like the round part of your head that holds your skull. It's pretty, or your brains. It's pretty close to being spherical. We also uh, have what's called the shield, which is like your face. Okay, it's where all your facial features go. So let's see, we're going to divide this into three. So we're going to try to divide this into four equal sections, and then we're going to add one more fourth. So it kind of comes down like this. So here's the face, and it goes back up into the head. All right, so really basic head shape here. Again, we want to draw lightly. We want to draw gently. All right. So let's see. It's going to be our eye level about here. Okay. We're going to draw on the front of the face a little indentation. So some people will have a little indentation here, right at the eye level where the top of the nose is. Some people will not. It just kind of depends on how your skull is shaped. Some people it will be really deep and pronounced. Some people not so much. Uh, but just for helping us position and figure out where everything else is, we're going to put that in. We're going to go about halfway down from here to here, about this level here. That's going to be the bottom of the nose. So the nose is going to generally come up a little bit from the face and then go back towards the eye level that we drew earlier. About halfway down here, we want to make the bottom of the mouth. So the mouth's going to come out like this. We have two kind of lumps right here. Oh, yeah, they're called lips. That makes a little more sense, right? Yeah, there's a name for them. Scientists just named that part. Uh, okay, so there's lips and then a chin. And again, these are going to vary a lot from person to person. This is just sort of basic guidelines, right? Okay, next I want to draw an eye. So I'm going to move a little bit back from that indentation. I'm going to make an eye. The eye shape is going to look kind of like this from the side. Okay, so we're going to have the curve of the eyeball, but then almost a carrot shape, something like that. And we want the eyelid covering up some of the eye here. 
on top and a little bit of it on bottom. I can draw the pupil in there, then the iris, something like that. It's really simplified, but that's okay. What's that? So when I what I figured out when looking at other photos of sideway faces, I thought the pupil would normally go to the back of the eye. The back of the eye? Like when it's sideways. Show me what you mean. Uh it depends what direction the person's looking. If you're looking forward it's gonna be at the front. If you're looking to the side it'll be like over here. All right, so we also have kind of the curve of the nose back here and then a little bit of the nostril. The nostril is almost like a watermelon seed shape, okay? And just depending on the angle of the person, you may or may not be able to see very much nostril. It just kind of depends. Noses vary a lot. Yeah. Now, uh, let's talk about positioning the ear. Uh, so this is a tricky spot where a lot of people mess up. The ear is actually like way farther back than we usually put it. So I'll show you a trick to figure that out. If we measure the distance from the eye level to the chin and then go backwards from the front of the head, that's where the back of the ear is going to be. So the back of the ear is going to be about here. We're going to start it at eye level. We're going to go up, down. The bottom is going to be at the bottom of the nose level. Okay. So the distance from here down to the chin is the same as the distance from here to the back of the ear. Okay. Also, if you feel your face, you'll notice that your jawline comes from your chin up and connects like right below your ear. So we want to start the jaw here and move down this way. Something kind of like this. So then we want to clean this up, get rid of our sketching marks, maybe start shading things in a little bit. Let's see if I can draw an ear. Ear's going to scoop around this way. Like this. Like this. Like this. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, so those are just kind of simple, basic uh, proportions. Um, mine always end up looking a little weird when I'm not drawing from a model, just because that's not really my specialty. Uh, but. You can kind of see how the basics work. And this is kind of the basic formula you should use uh, in combination with your observation to 
Uh, draw proportional people. Okay? 